Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Justin Charles, and Josh All. What's up, Browns fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Dogs Podcast presented by Omaha Steaks. Josh All alone with you on a very stormy, windy, hailing, potentially tornado-y day here in Ohio. Hopefully, if you guys are here in Ohio listening, watching, I hope you guys, everybody was safe today. I don't really know as far as the the damage in Northeast Ohio, across the state, what everybody experienced, but I know that the, you know, the storms were ripping through. We were being projected to have 80 mile an hour winds where I'm located. Fortunately, it looks like we're going to avoid all that, but I, I'm sure some places got nailed. So if you guys did get some some weather situations today, drop it in the comments. would love to hear what happened where you're at and hope everybody again is okay. And I also hope that you guys had a great Easter holiday weekend. It was a great weekend. Uh, weather held up for the most part. I, I mean, we did some Easter egg hunting and spent some time outdoors with family and it was just a really, really good time. I hope you guys enjoy yours as well. Today, what I want to talk about, and I don't know how long it's going to take, probably not too terribly long, but I want to break down the list, the current list of NFL draft prospects that the Browns have either met with or are planning to meet with. Now, I know Kenny Mack and I did an episode a couple weeks ago talking about our top six players for the Browns that they have met with. This is a little bit different. I'm not going to do a deep dive into many players. There's a couple guys I want to highlight, and I'm planning to do more in-depth prospect profile episodes on these players as the month unfolds but we'll dive into them a little bit here on today's show. But the big thing that I want to highlight out of this list of guys that the Browns are meeting with, I want to talk about the position groups. Because if you look at the volume of players within each position group, you can kind of get a good idea of what the Browns are planning to do, what the Browns want to focus on in the upcoming draft. Which, by the way, is this month. We're here, baby. We are in April, and we're only a few weeks away from the NFL draft for 2024 to see who becomes new members of the Cleveland Browns. So before I get started on this episode, guys, like the video on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. We are moving toward, my dog is freaking out for some reason. Would you see a mouse, dude? Anyway, we are moving toward 10,000 subscribers and cannot wait to reach that mark that has been a huge goal for us because it's something we never thought was going to be possible when we first started this podcast over four years ago. And here we are. So thank you guys. And if you're listening on audio, especially on Apple Podcasts, please scroll to the bottom of the Dogs Podcast homepage on that app and drop us a five-star written review. Just to click five stars, leave us a comment, and then post. And that helps us get recognized and recommended to more Browns fans like you. So let's dive into this episode. Let's talk about the list of players the Browns have met with. So I'll, I'll, we're going to look at two different lists. The first one is from NFLTradeRumors.com, which I've always felt every year that they do a pretty good job compiling a, a solid comprehensive list of players that each team is meeting with in the draft process. Now, I also get the second list we'll look at is from Barry Shuck, dogsbynature.com staff writer has been on the show a bunch and you'll see a lot of crossover, but you also see some names on each list that aren't on the other. That's why I wanted to look at both to try to get as, as much around this as possible. So according to NFL trade rumors.com top 30 visits, the Browns so far have planned Miami offensive lineman, Javian Cohen, who we detailed on the episode with Kenny Mack. Yale offensive tackle, and please bear with me on this, Karen Omegadigi. Omegadigi. I have no idea, guys. I'm trying. Western Kentucky wide receiver Malachi Corley. Uh, Ohio State defensive tackle Michael Hall Jr. Quarterback from Tennessee, Joe Milton. Talk about him in a second. Defensive tackle Mason Smith out of LSU. Florida State defensive tackle Braden Fisk. Texas wide receiver Xavier Worthy. Houston offensive tackle Patrick Paul, Penn State defensive end Adisa Isaac. Talk about him in a second. And the Browns had a formal interview 
Oh, and this is just a repeat, but they've, they had a formal interview with JV and Cohen at the combine. So they have already met with JV and Cohen twice. And if you watch the episode with Kenny Mack, you understand if you didn't go back and watch it, I, that's a guy that I have pegged for the Browns. I just have a strong gut feeling based on his prospect profile, the versatility he brings to the offense and what he can do very well. And his projected draft spot, like, third round-ish, maybe even a little bit later where the Browns are able to really just get him in a good value spot, kind of like they did with Dewan Jones last year. I think JV and Cohen's going to be a Cleveland Brown. We'll see. That's my prediction right now. And then last part of this list, the all-star circuit, Virginia wide receiver Malik Washington, Washington defensive tackle. <clears throat> Here we go again. Tuli Latula Gasanoa. I tried, guys. Augustana offensive tackle Blake Larson and James Madison wide receiver Phoenix Sproles. So that's the list of guys that the Browns have met with or plan to meet with according to NFLTradeRumors.com bouncing over now to DogsByNature.com. And again, this is from uh, our correspondent, Barry Shuck. Good guy, Barry. He also has defensive tackle Mason Smith out of LSU. He has wide receiver Troy Franklin out of Oregon. The Browns met with him at the Combine, so this was not on the other list. Uh, offensive guard Christian Haynes out of UConn. He was, the Browns met with him at the Senior Bowl. He was also not on the other list. That's another name I want to talk about a little bit more later in the episode. Quarterback Joe Milton out of Tennessee. Again, we'll talk about him a little bit more. Defensive tackle Braden Fisk out of Florida State. We've done episodes on him. Offensive tackle Blake Larson out of Augustana. Talked about him on the other list. Wide receiver Malik Washington out of Virginia. And here we go again. Offensive guard Javian Cohen out of Miami. And he's got a top 30 visit scheduled as a reminder. So I, I really do like Javian Cohen. And Kenny Max guy running back Aiden Robbins. Go back and watch that episode. We also have an individual video clip of just that segment about Aiden Robbins. I mean, this could be a running back the Browns grab at the end of the draft, or maybe even as an undrafted free agent who could come in and play in 2024. I really like this prospect. So go check out Aiden Robbins, wide receiver Xavier Worthy out of Texas, offensive tackle Gabe Wallace out of Buffalo. Talked to him at the combine the Browns did, was not on the other list, but a guy that Kenny Mack also highlighted extensively. Defensive tackle Miles Murphy out of North Carolina. The Browns talked to him at the East-West Shrine Bowl. He was also not on the other list, but he is a player that Kenny Mack really likes. I have not done too much of a deep dive into Miles Murphy, but we've got a few weeks here ahead of the draft. We're going to be doing a lot more prospect profiles and things as we get closer, more news, more rumors come out. Miles Murphy could very well be one of those players that we talk about. And then we've got running back Audric Estime out of Notre Dame, the five foot 11, 227 pound tank. If you've seen the post we had on Twitter a while back, the dude is swole. I think is how the kids say it now. He's just freaking massive. And uh, be interesting, be fun to watch him run the ball for the Cleveland Browns. And here's a wide receiver that Derek Frisbee talked about on his top 10 receiver prospects shows. And I want to do a little more deep dive into there. I'm definitely going to do an episode about Jermaine Burton from Alabama. The Browns talked with him at the Combine. We'll see if they schedule a top 30 visit with him. He's a player the Browns could end up moving back if they wanted to later in the second round, maybe early third. Get him a little bit later in the draft. And from what I'm hearing from draft prospects, now, again, I know he's got some personality things, some off-the-field stuff that are raising red flags and question marks about him coming into the NFL. But as far as his on-the-field game, his college game, what he was able to do at the wide receiver position, I like what I'm hearing from the scouts. I really do. He sounds like he could come in and be an immediate contributor everywhere at the wide receiver position. So we'll talk more about Jermaine Burton at some point. Again, we've got offensive tackle here, Karan Amended Jenna G. I have no idea how to say this guy's name. Dude, if you ever listen to this or, or if the Browns do draft you because you are a top 30 visit for the Browns, I promise you I will learn how to say your name and I will learn how to say it well and confidently and correctly. Mark my words. And then we've got, oh gee, here we go again. Defensive tackle Tule, the Tule Gasanoa 
from Washington. The Browns talked to him at the NFL Combine. And let's see, defensive tackle Michael Hall talked about him. A couple others that are interesting. Quarterback Bo Nix, the Browns talked to him at the NFL Combine. And I'll kind of wrap my my thoughts on the Bo Nix thing for the Browns in when I talk about Joe, Mil- Joe Milton here in a second. Offensive tackle Patrick Paul, wide receiver Malachi Corley, defensive end Isaac Adisa, and D, or I'm sorry, offensive tackle. I'm, I'm scrolling. I skipped this guy because I wanted to come back to him. Delmar Glaze is a player who I did a deep dive into because he was going to be one of the players I presented on the top six show with Kenny Mack. I ended up going with JV and Cohen because as I did my deep dive into him, I just fell in love. And I could just see it. I could just see the fit so perfectly. And clearly the Browns do too because they're having their set. They had a formal meeting with him before. Now they're going to do a top 30 visit with him. And Delmer Glaze, man, this just screams offensive tackle value that the Brown and versatility that the Browns could grab later in the draft. And I would love uh, if this uh, Maryland tackle Glaze became a Cleveland Brown in the NFL draft. And I'll talk about him too on a later episode. I'll do a, more of a deep dive profile on him because I already, I already got the information written out. I just need to present it to you guys. And I will do that at a later date as we get closer to the draft. But those are the two lists that I wanted to just quickly run through and talk about. And then I'm trying to decide here. I think what we'll do, let's have the conversation first about positions and what sort of indicators we can see with these positions. And then I'll go back and I'll talk about a couple of the names that I highlighted as I went through the list. And I won't do a formal ad read segment, you know, like I normally do on these episodes, but guys, I just want to remind you, Omaha Steaks, it's spring, grilling season. You can still do the 50% off site wide and Code Dogs, D-A-W-G-S, gets you $30 off your order when you check out. It is great value. The cost of food, I just went to the grocery store the other day. Cost of food sucks. It is so freaking high. It is ridiculous. I don't know how we're expected to do this much longer, but Omaha Steaks, the the quality of food you get and the amount of food you get for the price you pay, especially with the code and the money off, you really can't beat it. And the other thing, if you guys haven't tried the free 14-day free trial of Aura, please give it a swing. It helps out the show if you guys just do the free trial. And honestly, I would I recommend it because I've been looking for an online data information identity theft protection solution for a while. And it's just always in the back of my mind when I'm buying things online and I'm doing my banking and paying bills and things. And it's like, I really should have some sort of background protection running here because information is getting stolen all the time. It's so easy to get hacked. Aura.com, A-U-R-A.com slash dogs. Get you a 14 day free trial. And if you do nothing else, just sign up for the free trial. All you need is your name, the email address you want scanned and your phone number. And that's all you, that's like the minimum requirements you have to put in information wise. It goes in, create your account, and then you can run a scan and Aura will scan the entire web, the dark web, everything to see where your email address and your phone number are being collected and sold by data brokers. Really cool. I did mine, found 14 data brokers that add my information and we're selling it and Aura immediately goes in and submits the whatever it is, the legal formal request to have that information removed and then protects you from that information ever being taken by another data broker. So really cool stuff. Check it out. Try it out. And if, again, if it's not for you, there's no obligations, but it does help out the show if you guys sign up for the 14-day free trial. And that's it for advertising. I really just want to stick to the topics today and let's talk about positions. So if you were paying attention or keeping notes, which I'm sure nobody was because I wasn't either, as I was going through those two lists of prospects for the Browns, what I noticed right away, just looking at the, of course, Kenny Mack sent me a very detailed list and breakdown of all these players because he is a super detailed and just very organized, put together dude. Kenny Mack, you are awesome. But anyway, the Browns are meeting with a crap ton of offensive linemen a lot of guards, a lot of tackles, offensive linemen that are projected at all different rounds throughout the draft. So there are guys, Christian Haynes is one of the guys that I wanted to talk about. He is a player, an offense, the offensive guard out of, um, sorry, 
offensive Connecticut, and he, uh, I think he could be a guy that the Browns, if he's available in the second round, probably draft him. So I said I was going to talk a little bit more about some players later down the road, or you know, toward the end of this podcast. You know how I, you know how I roll, just fly by the seat of my pants here, and we're going to talk about him right now as I go through these positions because Christian Haynes. He he played every snap at right guard in college, all three years. So he redshirted as a freshman. <clears throat> excuse me, but in twenty one, twenty two, and twenty three, he was the starting right guard for the Connecticut Huskies. And over that period, I mean, in twenty twenty one to twenty three, eight hundred fourteen snaps, eight hundred seven snaps, eight hundred two snaps. That's a lot of snaps. I can't do the quick math right here. It's like what twenty four hundred some snaps. And he gave up three total sacks all of college. That's the kind of stuff we're looking for because that is very similar to the production from college that we saw with Dewan Jones, Luke Whipler, these guys who have extensive experience starting at the college level with proven production. And this guy shows that he can, his, his grades on PFF are great. 80.1 run block grade, 82.5 pass block grade, all top of the, of the class. 89.2 zone grade, that's at the top. 64.5 gap grade, that's near the top. I mean, I know 64 doesn't sound that great, but if you look at the, this chart, it is. And then true pass set, pass block grade was a 74 point. Seven, and I'll just read you real quick. He's he's six foot two, three hundred thirteen pounds. And what PFF says about him, Haynes showed in his tape and at the Senior Bowl that he has starting potential measurables and traits at guard in the NFL. His best work comes on the move, which would bode well for a zone blocking scheme and as a polar for man gap schemes. He sounds like the perfect eventual heir to Wyatt Teller. Do you guys disagree? This guy, I think that Christian Haynes could definitely come in. And th the nice thing about it, I guess it's kind of a double-edged thing. So say we have to use our second round pick to get Christian Haynes. Well, as long as everybody stays healthy, fingers crossed, we don't have another tackle to Juan Jones situation like last year where he's, you weren't expecting him to play and then he had to be the starter. Haynes isn't your starter. He's not, he might not even play a snap in in 2024 until week 18 when hopefully we play the Bengals in another bye week game but I'm telling you this guy could come in and he could be that future starting offensive guard for the Cleveland Browns and I I just really like everything I've been reading about Christian Haynes and everything his stats his numbers his grades like the guy I think the guy's going to be a very very good NFL pro so offensive line is where this whole conversation started. They have met with a ton of these guys. Like I said, I know I'm repeating a little bit, but Christian Haynes would be, if he's available in the second round, they've got their target for the second round. There's a couple other guys. Cohen could be a target for the third, maybe even fourth round to see where he falls. And then Glaze could be a guy in the fifth round and some of these other guys. So they have their targets and they're meeting with them. They know that, hey, if we're in this round and we haven't gotten one of the guys previously, you know, in the third round, we missed out on our guy in that, in that round, but the guy in the fourth round is there, we're taking him. And that's just the kind of stuff that you can identify looking at what, what moves they're making. And then the other position that the Browns have scheduled a ton of meetings with is interior defensive line. So it just... Goes to show that at some point in this draft, they are taking a defensive tackle to continue to build the depth and the future of that position. We don't need a defensive tackle this year. We absolutely do not. We are good. What the Browns have done last year in free agency with Tomlinson, then this year bringing back Mo and Shelby and bringing in Jefferson and drafting Ika in the third round last year, we don't need defensive tackle. Whoever we draft this year might not play, and I wouldn't be surprised. But a lot of these guys are on one-year deals and the Browns clearly have that pegged as a priority for the draft. So expect offensive line, expect interior defensive line. And the reason I mentioned um, Adisa Isaac earlier is because he is the only so far, he is the only, uh, I'm trying to, 
spell his name right. He is the only uh, pat or edge rusher. Sorry, the only edge rusher the Browns plan to meet with or have met with. I don't remember exactly, but that shows me that they are already pretty good with what they have at edge rusher. Miles Garrett, Zedaria Smith's on a two-year deal now. Oboe's still here for another two years. And Alex Wright, obviously here for another couple of years because he's still on his rookie deal. We have Isaiah McGuire, who we just drafted last year. And I still have high hopes for Isaiah McGuire. Again, last year, wasn't needed. Didn't need him to come in and play. And I'm thinking he could also be a dude that we're going to see play more and more as the season and next year go on. But Adisa Isaac, I think the Browns are looking at that saying, hey, look, where we are in the second round, if Isaac is available, we have to take him because he is that good of a value at that spot. And I will say this, I do not, I don't expect the Browns to trade up. I don't expect the Browns to trade up in the draft to draft anybody. I think that they've got a plan. I think that they have best player available mentality. Now, obviously, they've got a higher ranking of importance on different positions, but it's still BPA for them because they have filled everything in free agency. There's not one draft pick that the Browns have to make this year who is going to have to start right away. Like, unless people get injured, but I'm just saying, as of now, in April, we're good. We're good. We're drafting for depth and future development. So this is wonderful position to be in. And I think Isaac kind of fits that bill if he's available you know, to them in the second round. But I would be, if I had to put money on a move, like if somebody said, you have to bet right now, Andrew Barry, does he move up, stay put, move back? Well, move up is completely out for me. I'm not betting on that one bit. Most likely thing with Andrew Barry in the second round, in my opinion, if I had to bet, would be a trade back. Now, am I talking a huge trade back? No, no, no. I'm talking he might move back five, six, seven spots and get an extra fourth or fifth round pick and still get the guy he wanted anyway. That's what smart GMs do. They don't just take their guy when they're on the clock because they're available. They say, okay, the guy I want is, on the, is going to be here when I pick. But I'm looking behind me here and I think I could move back four spots, get an extra pick, and still get my guy. That's what smart GMs do and that's what Andrew Barry does. So my money would honestly be on a trade back just to get some extra picks and he's still going to get the guys he wants. He always does. He knows what he's doing and we're very lucky to have him. Now, if he stays put and because he sees a guy falling right into his lap and he wants to pull the trigger, I could see that happening too, but my money would be on a trade back. So we'll see. We'll see what happens, but Adisa Isaac's a guy to keep an eye on along with Christian Haynes in that second round. The other... So it's, it's also important to note the Browns are meeting with a few running backs. So clearly they see running back as a need, but you know I see a lot of people online, a lot of Browns fans, Trey ben, or, uh, yeah, Trey Benson, Trey Benson, let's get him, let's get Blake Corum. Some of these higher, higher names. The thing with the dr- running backs in this draft, the top end isn't that great. There is no Brees Hall, B. John Robinson, Jameer Gibbs type of running backs in this draft. I think that Trey Benson's going to be, I think that he's probably going to be a pretty good running back in the NFL. Depends on where he goes, of course. If he goes to the right team to use him the right way. But the players the Browns are meeting with, uh, Estime, Aiden Robbins, signals to me that they want a running back. They've got their eyes on grabbing a running back, but it's not going to be till later. It'll be a later round pick, or like I said with Aiden Robbins, could be a potential UDFA situation. Which I don't have a problem with. I mean, you guys, if you've watched the show long enough, you know how I feel about the running back position anyway and where the Browns are at with financially, with the cap, with their free agent signings and everything. I think we're okay. I think we can put together a decent enough running back room because we are going to get Nick Chubb back at some point. At least that's the plan. So I like what the Browns are doing in that regard. Notice that they have not met with any safeties. They just re-signed Rodney McLeod. I could not imagine them drafting using a draft pick this year on a safety. UDFAs, sure, they're going to sign all kinds of guys after the draft. But we've got with Hickman and Bell backing up uh, Delpit and Thornhill and now McLeod coming back. I don't see them using a draft pick on a safety. We've already talked about defensive line. We're going to grab a receiver at some point. It's just a matter of who. 
they if they use a higher pick on a running back, Troy Franklin would be that guy because he's the higher one they've met with. If they do really like Malachi Corley, he could end up being the second round pick. Maybe they trade back a little bit in the second round pick to let him fall a little further to them. I don't know exactly where he's being projected, but that would be my guess at the moment. And then you've got guys like Malik Washington. And I'm not sure who the the Phoenix kid was, but I'll have to look him up to see a little bit more about him. And then the uh, the last two positions I want to talk about, well, really three. One of them is really just a mention. So I'm going to talk about corner, quarterback, and tight end. The first cornerback. It's interesting to me that the Browns have not scheduled any vis- visits with a cornerback. We know how important cornerback is to NFL teams in general, and especially to the Browns. I feel like we always draft a corner. We're, we're investing in cornerbacks. You can ne- we, Blake says all the time, you never have enough cornerbacks. They get injured all the time. It's not just Denzel Ward, guys. These guys are all going to miss games. And then knock on Newsom. Oh, he misses games. They all miss games. Cornerbacks are going to miss games. They are smaller guys. They're more fragile. It's just, it just is what it is. They have less weight about them so that they can run and move and be more agile with these really fast and, and shifty wide receivers nowadays. And they just get hurt, you know, and you have to have depth there. So if the Browns are not meeting with any cornerbacks, I don't know if we're moving Greg Newsom. I know that there's all those trade rumors going around about Newsom, but I think he's here for 24. I think the Browns see the value in having him on the team. He's a great NFL starting cornerback. If you don't like, if you don't like Greg Newsom, I mean, why, why don't you? And nobody plays perfect all the time. But Greg Newsom is a damn good cornerback in the NFL. And having him in that trio with Emerson and Ward, you can't beat that, man. You have got to have a solid secondary, and the Browns do. And I know I really liked what Cam Mitchell showed on the field in some limited action last year as a later round rookie. I mean, we got some good depth there, and the Browns just signed Justin Hardy today. Now, I don't expect him to be playing any cornerback depth. That would be more of your Tony Brown, but, you know... The depth, is, at least there is another player who can play that position. God forbid we need him to. So cornerback is one that is really intriguing me right now with the Browns. But right now it just seems Greg Newsom is a locked in to be here in 24. I don't think the Browns plan on moving him at all. And finally, let's talk about these quarterbacks. So I'll talk about them in the same way, but I'm really going to spend my time talking about Joe Milton. So the Browns obviously had their combine meeting with Bo Nix and they are meeting on a top 30 visit with Joe Melton from Tennessee later this month. So I posted this on Twitter and Facebook if you're there too and Instagram, but we post stuff everywhere, guys. But I was just looking for reaction from Browns fans, feedback, thoughts, opinions on why are the Browns using, because you only get 30 of these top 30 visits, why are they using a top 30 visit on a quarterback. And the thing with Joe Milton is the dude has the body. He has got the frame to play quarterback in the NFL. He's like six foot four, something like that. 240, 35 pounds. He's a big dude. He's got a rocket arm and he's very athletic that he can do RPOs and, and all kinds of things. He's, he's got the physical tools to play quarterback. But the scouts all agree his processing and his accuracy, his decision-making, timing, all that stuff, going to need a whole hell of a lot of work for him to have success at the NFL level playing quarterback. So I posed the question of, well, if we're meeting with a guy like Joe Milton, does that indicate the Browns are not totally sold on DTR considering we signed Jameis Winston and then we signed Tyler Huntley? In my opinion, that clearly puts DTR at QB4. For the Cleveland Browns. He is nowhere near. And I like DTR. Do not hear what I'm not saying. But that he's nowhere near the level of quarterback at the NFL that Tyler Huntley or Jameis Winston is. So what's going on with DTR? Are we not sold on him? And I forget who it was. And I think there were a couple people that pointed this out to me. And I'm sorry if it would I'd give credit if I could, if I could remember, but they said, think Logan Thomas when you're thinking Joe Milton. And as soon as I heard that, I thought, oh, that makes so much more sense. Logan Thomas was a quarterback converted to tight end. Plays tight end for the Washington Redskins, football team commanders, whatever the hell they are. And Joe Milton 
would be perfect for that because of his his side his size, his speed, his athleticism, and the fact that the Browns' tight end situation is kind of sketch right now. We've got David and Joku, and then we've already got a whole season to see what Jordan Akins can provide for the offense, and it wasn't a whole hell of a lot. So, what do the Browns do at tight end? Harrison Bryant's gone, and he wasn't producing a whole lot. We haven't signed anybody other than Giovanni Ritchie, and he's more of a special teams guy anyway. Oh, what are we going to do? Oh, enter the Joe Milton conversation because we've seen we have seen quarterbacks transition to tight end at the NFL level and have some success there because a quarterback has a much better understanding, obviously, of where he wants his receivers to be on his routes, how he wants his, you know, a tight end to block, certain things like that. And one of the big pros to Milton's scouting reports is always he can come in and execute RPO style plays immediately at the NFL level. Now, do you want him being your quarterback right away? No, absolutely not. But he can do that kind of stuff. And he was, he graded very well in the intermediate areas of the field outside the numbers. It just, that seemed to me like a very plausible thing that Andrew Barry would do. Let's, let's get creative. We want an athletic tight end who can contribute right away. And we know that tight ends your traditional tight ends do not typically contribute right away at the NFL level. I mean, come on, David Njoku took like seven years to really be what he has become. And if you get a guy like Joe Milton who can come in and execute certain packages and certain, you know, a very specific role, that would be awesome. And he's not projected to go till later in the NFL draft anyway. So if the Browns were to grab him, Later, if he's falling and they think it's a good value spot, maybe that's their plan. I'm not saying, I I haven't heard that reported. It was just a suggestion made to me that I thought made a lot of sense. So I I really like that idea. Um, And the same would go with Bo Nix. Now, I think that he's obviously going to get drafted probably in the, I know I've been seeing him mocked in the second, but I could see him being like a Malik Willis kind of fall to the third, maybe even a little bit later. I'm not real sure if anybody's going to be super high on Bo Nix, but he could be the same sort of situation where it's like, well, if we were in a position to grab him, could he come in and play a Taysom Hill tight end type of role where he can take a snap, run the ball, hand it off, throw it if we need it, go out and catch a pass? Like, can he just kind of be a do it all kind of dude? You know, and, and I think it's pretty cool that the Browns, if that's what they're doing, you know, exploring creative options like that, that, that makes me happy. I like that kind of stuff. The last thing I just wanted to address real quick, because if you are an avid listener of the show, you watch all of our videos on YouTube and you follow along and you like what we're doing here, there was a a comment that I just, obviously I don't get caught up in social media comments because you cannot cannot do what we do and get lost in the comments because there is so much negativity. But there was one today that I thought I was going to, I'm going to call this one out because I think people need to hear this. And this is from Kogan Blaster on YouTube, and he has been around for years. And I'm sure even though you said you're not going to listen anymore or unsubscribe to the show, I'm sure you're going to hear this. So hear me out, dude. He says, you guys never cease to amaze me. You constantly belittle the fans and then wonder why, like me, they unsubscribe. And I simply said, we don't wonder at all. If you're among the fragment of fans that try to drag the rest of us down with your negativity toward the team and the quarterback, and you don't want called out about it, unsubbing is 100% the right choice. So I just come on here to say that because this had to do with the Dome Stadium conversation and talking about how the same people, we'll talk about this tomorrow night on the live show, but the same people who will pound the table for football has to be played in the elements. That's the way it's meant to be played are the same people who will then turn around and say, Deshaun Watson sucks because his passing yard average is lower than it used to be. Dude used to play in a dome. You dipshits. He's playing. We, he's already had a game in a, a downpour and a game where it was the second coldest game in Cleveland football history. So if you don't understand how weather impacts football, I'm sorry. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to help you, but there is so much negativity. Blake did a great solo episode, came out on Sunday addressing the toxic fans in the fan base. 
if you guys want if you guys want content that is lockstep with the Cleveland media, with the national media, with the mainstream stuff. This is not the show for you. This is not the show. We are going to go against the grain more times than not because nobody's telling us what to say. Everything that we do, everything that we say is 100% our, our God-honest opinion. It's rooted in logic and facts and stats and what we truly believe. Nobody pays us for anything that we say. We are fans first and always. We always have been. We always will be. And we will always give you that perspective. So if you want media BS narratives and you just want to hear the same repeated regurgitated talking points from Tony Grossi and Mary Kay, follow Tony Grossi and Mary Kay. We are not going to give that to you. We are going to give you what we've always given you, which is honest opinions, thoughts, and we're going to try to be as original as possible. Obviously, there's stuff that happens that we, the national media reports on, we agree with because it's like, yeah, we agree with that point. There's other stuff where we look at and say, that's stupid. If, if you want to spread negativity among the fan base, wrong show for you. We're here to support the Browns. Obviously, if they do stupid things, we will call it out. We'll say they did stupid things. But right now, it's all, all signs up, baby, for the Browns. They are doing great things. We have, we're in good hands. Andrew Barry and the front office, Kevin Stefanski and this coaching staff, it has never, at least in, at least in my lifetime, been a better time to be a Browns fan. So if, if you're still wallowing in a 1-31 in 31 mindset, I don't know what to tell you, but get with the times. It is a whole different ball game right now, and I'm not going to hold mistakes that Ray Farmer and Hugh Jackson and Freddie Bitchens did against Kevin Stefanski and Andrew Barry. Not only are they doing things great right now, they had to fix all the BS mistakes those guys made, and they've done a great job of it. So drop in the comments any of your thoughts, opinions. Love to hear from all of you guys. Honestly, I just, what makes you guys like the show? That what may, if you are an avid follower of the show, I see a lot of people drop in the comments and we always appreciate hearing from you. People say, glad I found this show, one of my new favorite shows. What makes, what makes you guys like the show? I'm sincerely interested to hear your feedback. And again, just want to remind everybody, like, subscribe on YouTube, follow the show, notifications. We got our NFL draft coverage episode live stream, I should say, coming up at the end of the month, Friday, April 26th. Starting at 7 o'clock is the plan. We might start at 6.45 a little early just to get things rolling and all that stuff. But we will be live for night two of the NFL draft, rounds two and round three. And we are going to have Kenny Mack from Canada, Derek Frisbee from Columbus, and Devontae Travis from... Oh, man, I keep forgetting. Where are, it's Green, I think. He's from Green. So everybody's coming into studio, and we are going to have everybody together on the live stream talking about the draft covers. It's going to be a ton of fun. Make sure you guys hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of those updates or miss when that starts. And again, Apple Podcasts, drop us a five-star written review. We really appreciate it. And jointhedogs.com, become an official Patreon member. Another great way to help support the show is just $5 a month. And we do an extra, we do a bonus podcast, a whole, it's called The Dogs After Hours. On there, you get an extra episode every week. And it's, it's a really fun show. We have a lot of fun doing it and putting it together for you guys. So check that out, jointhedogs.com if you're interested in becoming a Patreon member. And with that, I hope everybody has a great Tuesday. Enjoy the rest of your week. We will be on the live stream on YouTube tomorrow night. Podcast audio will be out Thursday morning. And until I talk to all you guys again later, let's go Browns. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast. Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com. This episode is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Browns fans were in late March, early April, and that means tournament season is here. 
And you've heard me talk about the delicious steaks and chicken and burgers and all the meats from Omaha Steaks. But did you know they also have incredible appetizers that are ready in a flash? That's right, Omaha Steaks has everything from chicken wings to flatbread pizzas, pigs in a blanket, and more. They're going to be the new favorites of all of your game day party spreads. Just head over to omahasteaks.com slash dogs and score big with 50% off site-wide. That's half off all your favorites like the tender juicy steaks, big beefy burgers, and the delicious appetizers like I just mentioned. Plus, use promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, when you check out and you'll get an extra $30 off your order. Omaha Steaks is making it as simple as a layup to step up your appetizer game this tournament season. Head over to omahasteaks.com, use promo code DOGS at checkout. That's 50% off site-wide plus that extra $30 off your order. Value has never tasted this good. Shop today, omahasteaks.com slash DOGS. Promo code DOGS when you check out $30 off your order. Minimum order may be required. 